Good morning. Uh, I'd like to call the uh, budget committee uh, to order and uh, ask for a motion to approve the minutes from August 15th, uh, 2017. Moved by Supervisor Stroud, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. <coughs> uh, any additions or corrections? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, the next item is uh, the review of the 2018 budget. Uh, where it currently stands uh, is a 2.9% increase. The, uh, the inflation factor was 1.84% set by the uh, state, by the comptroller. Uh, that, along with our carryover, uh, the growth factor, uh, all added together allows us to go up 3.15% uh, would be our, our limit to uh, increase the levy, which is $1,335,583. Uh, currently, we are $81,222 below the limit. Uh, we've also increased the uh, amount of sales tax that's in the budget. Uh, as you know, in uh, 2016, we had approximately $800,000 uh, growth in our sales tax receipts, and we've put about 786000 into this budget. Uh, half of that goes to the towns, and the other half benefits the county. One of my goals with this budget was to uh, get some revenue behind our debt costs for the uh, court expansion and for the NSTEM project. Uh, the total, approximately the total debt service is about 1.456 million. And uh, we have about 76% with uh, revenue behind it. So uh, there's still Another, uh, let's see, there's still another 425000 that's coming out of fund balance. So uh, that's probably next year's goal. I've also used 125000 of uh, occupancy tax uh, to uh, fund the invasives which funds about half of the 250000 exactly half. Uh, health insurance is, is basically flat. Uh, I did, I have put in for a 2.9% uh, increase on the uh, non-union employees, department heads. Uh, I did vary some of the department heads that were evaluated uh, based on their evaluations. So uh, anywhere from 3.3 down to 2.4. Uh, I did reduce the money in the uh, DPW budget. There was a few positions that were eliminated and uh, also uh, currently I've taken 200,000 out of uh, paving. Also included in the, in here is uh, 164,000 for DPW reallocations and 84,000 for the uh, corrections uh, reallocations, the thousand dollar bump for each correction officer, which is uh, $248,000 total, along with a 2.9 percent increase uh, for their contract. In here, uh, there is also money in here for the uh, PBA. I uh, won't say exactly how much, but there is money in the budget to, uh, when that contract is settled, hopefully to cover uh, our increased cost. Uh, as you can see on the uh, departmental request summary sheet, uh, you can kind of see that uh, health services is up considerable. Uh, IT is up considerable. Uh, sheriff's three budgets is up $652,000. Those 
there would be an uh, office for the aging is a good job. That's kind of where it's at. Uh, also, I will say that uh, to be at the 2.96%, uh, I have uh, increased the use of fund balance in the general fund by $277,190 for a total of uh, 1,255,602. But if you uh <coughs> if you take out the occupancy tax and calculate the all the fund balances, overall we have reduced the use of fund balance by 303,498. <coughs> General funds up, but the other ones are down. And occup occupancy is basically a pass through, anyways. Uh, with that, uh, any questions? Comments? Yes, Claudia. You, you mentioned about the department heads evaluation. Can you give us a breakdown of how, those, how you worked out those percentages? Like if people got a right. three, they got the lowest. Right. And then. Right. If you got a, if you, if you were to, well, let's see. I got the sheet here. If you were at the top, uh, a five or four, high four, uh, you got 3.3. I graduated down, I think I had uh, four or five graduations. We can find it. And if you were down around three or so, uh, you ended up with uh, 2.4, 2.5, excuse me. So I had 3.3, 3.1, 2.9, 2.7, and 2.5, and it was based on uh, five and down to 4.9. Uh, from there down to 4.7 was a 3.1. Uh, from uh, 4.6 to 4.4 was a 2, 2.9. 4.3 to 4.1 was a 2.7. And under four, four one, four point one was a uh, two point five. Yes. If you can, what are the big changes in IT and the sheriff? Why are they so much larger? Uh, well, the sheriff. Uh, for one thing, we took out two hundred thousand dollars in uh, revenue from uh, having prisoners at the jail. There was 400,000 budgeted, and I think currently we're under 100,000 received. Uh, so, I, so we reduced that by 200. So that's that's 200 of it. Uh, then we also have the uh, the $84,000 uh, allocation for the correction officers. Uh, increase in pay. And what else is in there? There was uh, some equipment that uh, needed to be purchased. Uh, that's that's what I can remember. The key was all salaries. Yeah, uh, IT right was uh, increases in salaries. We were losing people to uh, the private sector, and. Uh, and having trouble uh, hiring people because they can make more money other places. So uh, we, we increased the salaries, a lot of them, by uh, 5000 or more. And uh, that was the major expense in that, yes. Just trying to clarify, Frank, the, uh, the uh, revenue stream uh, for the sheriff, it, it, is, is it because we were getting less prisoners Correct. to house? No. The, uh, 
long term uh, with uh, the governor and the legislature's change in uh, uh, how we categorize uh, youth in terms of uh, incarceration, uh, the, the, you know, if we have space in our jail, uh, that, that may be an opportunity because there are people scrambling uh, 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 to find a home for these folks in the state of New York. So, it, uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a thought going well, forward or not. There's problems with that too because you, yeah. you can't board certain prisoners with certain prisoners and you know mm -hmm. males or females and mm -hmm. violent and nonviolent and kids you know it, it gets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's very regulated it's my understanding Peter that uh, we won't be able to board juveniles okay. now it's and that's one of the big concerns it still hasn't been settled yet but I did watch uh, capital tonight and you know the, the the state says that the change in raise the age will save the county's money. It behooves me and a lot of my colleagues were scratching our heads on how are you going to save money if you have to build facilities that cost thousands or millions of dollars, but you know, you're going to save money on this. So the, I think the thing is out. But I will say that I did speak to the sheriff about the boarding in of prisoners because one of the things we were losing were the federal prisoners and he told me that he had assurances just recently talking to the U.S. Marshal of the Northern, Northern District. So we should see some more federal prisoners coming back to this facility in the future but because that's always been a concern and then you know we've got a lot of federal prisoners they pay a little bit more per day and uh, we were getting them but then we lost them and we hadn't had a lot of boarding in and other people have built jails too you know that's that's one of the other things. Other people have built correctional facilities in their last recent years. In fact, I think Herkimer County told me yesterday. I think they may have to build a new facility in Herkimer County. So when that happens, you know, you lose them. But I don't think raise the age, and <coughs> if that's what you're going with, yeah. I don't think that's going to help us. Okay. Okay. I think it's going to hurt us more, okay. at least in the short term. That's my understanding, Frank. Yeah. Frank, just so I'm on the same, it's the same topic of the Sheriff's Corrections Division, mm -hmm. the net budget increase being proposed is about 582000 Correct. Okay. And that is just because we're not getting the income generated that we used to get? Or expected that's again. part of it because uh, like I say we were budgeting 400,000 and I had to reduce it to 200 and we probably won't get that but probably next year it'll get reduced again I would think and then we have the one-time adjustment we made to their salaries right. which is what 84,000 84 right 84,000 we made a one-time adjustment to their salaries for 2018 of the thousand dollars per correction officers to help with the Retaining of those employees. Okay, thank you. So that's that's 84. Yeah, that's a that's a hard bite, but I don't know what you're gonna do. Yeah, you got it. Yes, Claudia. Thank you. And I mean, I know that with that 84,000, and we're looking at the responsibility of lowering the revenue because we know we're not getting that. Right. I think another area that we need to take a hard look at, and I, I raised this with you, Frank, is about the um, SPCA contract under the sheriff's office looking at their, their quarterly reports and a lot of the stuff on their call volumes are phone calls that they're just like answering adoption calls. Um, they're on their list are things that we Edward, stuff on falls, and for dog issues that we know are not covered under our contract now and that we have all of our bite issues being covered through public health. So I'm I'm concerned that we're giving them a hundred thousand dollars and we're not sure exactly what how many calls they're providing for the county under the contract. And I know Supervisor Straub brought up about shared services for, you know, animal control, but we're not there right now. So what what are we, the county, exactly getting for or what we're paying to Warren County SPCA? Obviously, they're doing a lot in the community, but they have other contracts. So I, I think we need to take another look at that in an effort to reduce the sheriff's budget. Well, just uh, speaking for myself, 
in uh, Fort Moy Town. Uh, I would say uh, with the incident that happened here in the last couple of days, uh, they were the only ones I could get to respond. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, he, and he responded and took care of the problem, so. Uh, I, yes. I, I, I think you make a good point. It, w it wasn't the prettiest of pictures, uh, you know, in, in the Post Star, okay, Frank? The, uh, so you have someone that is effectively responding, but I, and, and I, I am a supporter of, uh, of the program, but I, but I, think, uh, I think we need more communication. Uh, as a board from uh, from the folks that uh, that run the program okay whether it's every 90 days whether it's every six months where they can come and just kind of give us an update give, give us a, a sense and a feel for what you're doing and uh, in, uh, in, in just ensuring that there is a proper accounting involved in the, in the whole process but again I, I think it's a matter of communication Who's looking at that or is, is Amanda Who's like, oh, the sheriff is looking at that. We can speak with the sheriff because he's taken over reviewing the, <laughs> the things. So, all right. Yes, Supervisor Liggett. I agree with Supervisor Bramer about that. We should be able to do those reports. If I was an auditor, uh, we have a contract that states some specific items of what they cover, but uh, as far as what we get for a report, is everything that comes across the airwaves into their uh, into their unit. Uh, that money was in there for uh, to us to pay something that was coming up this year. I forget exactly. Union settlements. Union settlements. Sorry, that helped pay for the increase, pay increases. As far as far as animal control, I, I I am I am not suggesting that there's unaccountability here. I think communication is the issue. Okay, and that that he come forward and kind of kind of talk to us. Supervisor Sieber. Thank you, uh, Supervisor uh, Thomas. I, I have a couple questions about the budget, but the first one, if, if we're going to talk about contracts and large contracts, I'm wondering, when I look at the budget line for back up, 470, there's three contract lines on, uh, under the legislative board. For instance, the one with Lake Clock, are there other contracts within that $230,000 going to them, or is that just Lake Clock? No, that's just, that's all they get. That's, I'm sorry? It's just Lakes for Locks, and there's a, a, the Adirondack North Country Association. And do we get reports from them on a quarterly basis, or do they come in and report to us, or, I mean, I know I've asked in the past for after action reports to, to have that accountability. Are we doing that to all of our contracts? Hmm? I don't believe I don't want to get reports from them. I'm not sure that we get them from Lake Locks. I know that we get them from the city um, and bases. Um, I don't think we get it from Anka. I had to have to double check that to say for sure right now. I just know I, I've asked for those in the past. I haven't, I don't think we've gotten them. I don't think they, they submit them. Certainly we don't have quarterly reports of having them come in and, and just those two contracts were at half a million dollars. So. I think if we're going to look at contracts, we can look at all of them and hold everybody to the same standard. What's that? She's talking about? It's not a half a million, it's 2,000. We have 230 to Lake Tawas, right? What? Where? That's why I was asking what's the... Room. On the first page of the budget officer's recommendations under 470, the contract line. Right. I thought these were smaller contracts. Oh, no, that... Yeah, the... We, we added in the 2000 for the Lakes to Locks. We received a letter. So the, the 228 includes the uh, uh, City of Glens Falls contract. Okay. Uh, there's some bases okay. is in there. The whole Falls thing is 230, contract. all of these contracts. Yeah. Yeah, I think the entire annual budget of Lakes to Locks is I just thought it was small. 258. Okay. So in that line of 230,000, Am I reading that right? 230. Yep. Yes. 
that multiple contracts. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a, Thank you. I got worried <laughs> when I looked at that number and um, thought it was all the time, or just that one contract. But my, my point is still the same. Whether it's $2,000 or $100,000, we should still be asking for accountability right. from all of our contracts. So hopefully that's something we can get from them before this budget goes through. So we see how the money's been spent in the past and how they plan on spending the money in the future and have this same reporting requirement. But can I ask my other two questions quickly, if you don't mind? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The other, um, <coughs> I know we're going out for the county administrator position. You have it budgeted at 70425 but we've advertised eighty five. Yep. Is that... On with that. Do you just you're just gonna transfer the money in next year or you wanna you wanna bring that salary down to seventy thousand when we go out for it? No, that's just all I wanted the budget for. <laughs> <laughs> Should we update our um, announcement? No. No. We'll be fine. Either contingent or uh, fund balance. Well that's true. Yeah, if we have just Don's got a good point, if we don't hire somebody for a few months, then right. that's all we'll need in it. And then lastly, the creation of the airport mechanics, the two, are those stipends? Airport mechanics? Uh, Under the airport, you're, you're unfunding a position, but you add it to at 850? We, we unfunded one position. What do you do on page two of the, the long sheet? Airport deep and Unfund ma airport maintenance worker four. Create airport maintenance SGA. What's FTA? What is this match sense in our, our FTA? I'm not air, airport. I'm not um, I know, silly. You're FTA? FTA. To treat, to treat air command. Go ahead. I, I, I was talking, I'm sorry. They were asking about the FTA position. Yeah. Those are temporary assignments. Okay. Um, with ECW, had someone that works in a different title. We had to set up the title for a small amount of money. Yeah, that's uh, that's like on page four. Uh, all the uh, actually page five because because last year we just had forty four thousand in uh, temporary help, and uh, we've created uh, all these positions or lines, it, but it's still temporary uh, temporary help. It's an accounting. Yes, Claudia. Okay. Um, do you have the total of all major funds, revenues, and expenditures? Somewhere? All major funds? You want them individually or? No, the combined. Combined. <coughs> Well, as pertaining to the levy, the grand total is uh, 46403, 46,403,599. Uh, off the top of my head now. Is it on the sheet? Yep. Claudia? It's on your sheet. It's on the last page of the uh, summary. Oh, okay. yeah. Responsibilities. Yeah. 
in the big number. I agree. In general terms, it has been discussed. Okay, in fact, I think I have one point. <coughs> yeah. Yes, Jim. What was the cap total? The cap total uh, was uh, one million three hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred eighty-three. Three point. Receiver? Uh, okay. I don't see you. Uh, you were asking about the accountability on those contracts? Yes. Uh, the way it works is they have to submit receipts for the uh, whatever uh, has been budgeted for them. Okay. And uh, until until the auditor sees the receipts, they don't get paid. Okay, excellent. And is that something, I, and perhaps I just haven't been here when they've come in and talked to the board. I know a couple times they've come in they to did. request the money. Yeah, last year I think they were here. But they don't show up throughout the year? No, nope, they usually send a letter. And that's uh, uh, Anka, Lakes the Locks, and the Historical uh, Society. And they're all reimbursable? Right. But they have to document that they've spent the money and to get receipts as to what they spent it on. We. Okay. Um, can we get a, I don't see a revenue here, maybe I missed it, either Revenues. that or like a, just an overall balance sheet. Uh, well, okay, can we get that? I don't see it today, but that's not a crisis. But I, think, I think the closest you're going to get to that today would be the, uh, if you look at this uh, budget request form, the yeah. summary sheet, yeah, you'll see the expenditures and the revenues. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't tell you what they are. Well, yeah. Well, I see the department request. I see the expenditures. I didn't <coughs> see a revenues summary other than budget officer's recommendations for the uh, OFA, District Attorney, Railroad and Planning. But I don't see, yeah, I, I know you referred to the sales tax revenue and the amounts and the budget. I don't see that allocation. Here, here revenues. <coughs> Which uh, page? The last page. It's got revenues. Oh, not this, this sheet. Sales tax passes through the county treasurer's budget. Yeah, well, maybe I'm just missing which it. Which is on the front page. I don't know. Where is it? Yeah, there. It's on the last page. Got the revenues. The very oh, yeah. last. Let me see my absolute page. last page. <coughs> oh, I must. Yeah. 
Frank, do, do, do we have our total budget, what our total amount of, of the, the budget that, uh, that we're in anticipating or projecting going forward? I don't, I don't have that number, okay. no. Okay. It's probably, I would, my guess is probably 151, 152 million. Okay. But exactly what it is, I don't know. Okay. We, we kind of deal with the levy, you know, the okay. property tax levy. Yeah. Revenues right. from uh, sales tax. Individual revenues. Industrial. Supervisor Simpson? Yeah, but I'm looking at the I just have a question. Um, right, I know, I'm just saying yeah. that. Why we he don't said roll. said they're in there just now because they're complete. Right. Why we don't roll the um, stipend for the fiscal assistant accounting administrator right in the salary of the treasurer's office? You know, it's listed twice. You've got it's on page one. To be on uh, the number is A one zero one one. You know, it's um, fiscal, administrative fiscal, oh, wait a second. Yeah, administrative right, okay. fiscal services. Frank? Yep. That's. Why do we separate that? You, you want me to kind of handle that one? Sure. Okay. Um, basically, the that position has not always been the deputy treasurer. All right. At one time, it was uh, Rick um, Murphy. Murphy, who was not deputy treasurer. All right. And in the future, if Rob leaves, or whatever, we may have someone else in the office do that because the, historically that position has always been whoever has the most working knowledge about uh, the budget and how the money is allocated has been put into that position. Uh, which way, like in the past, it was Rick McCarthy. In the future, it may not be Rob if he retires or leaves or whatever. It may be somebody else. I, I know who was in the department would be put into that position. Right. Because of who of where everybody is if Rob left. Um, the but next you could separate to you don't oversee the budget, right? The county administrator kind of oversees the budget. So it's additional to right. what treasures. Oh yeah, this is right. yeah, this is yeah. just for so Okay. I just I just wondered, I yeah. Supervisor Bramer. I want that be four years. Back on the SPCA thing, just really quickly, I wanted to make sure that, well, there's a line on it for control of the animals, which I did not see before. Just to make sure we're not putting in two one hundred thousand dollars for them because I thought it was in the sheriff's budget. Yeah, it's a contract within the sheriff's budget. The animal control, that's that's something uh that's something else you see. No, it's it's that is the SPCA, but the Excuse me, I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. And the, the other thing I wanted to ask about is um, if we will see an updated four year financial plan. Yeah, probably after we adopt the budget, uh, you know. Supervisor McDonald. I'm not sure if you would know the answer to this question. Uh, I'm do. curious if you might know, maybe the treasurer, what the average dollar amount uh, paid by the residents in the county is, whether or not they spend on the bus, stay on the bus. Uh, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. that we know. Okay. Uh, I mean, like, what do we got? 66,000 roughly in the county, I think, somewhere. You divide that into 40. Three million, is that what the tax levy is? Yeah, it'll uh almost forty four million. Yep. I can't do that. Forty three seven. I think it's it's based on the tax rate on their assessed value map. So it's pretty value. difficult to say there's not one number. No, I, and I know that the average count varies, but I was still curious. What would be the average dollar amount? Well, the, the new rate per thousand, if this were adopted, would be what? Do we know that? 
Yeah, it was very good. Have you looked at the portion of the table yet? But the county, the actual mm -hmm. county rate would be about four dollars. What's that? About four dollars. You agree with that? Four dollars? Yeah. It's so around four dollars. Approximately. That's per thousand. So if you figure a hundred thousand dollar home, that you should make it. Yeah, but that's for two hundred. I mean, that's based on the total assessed valuation. Of no, no, no. I was just said it breaks down from town to town to town. But if you just wanted to take the county well, rate, that would be. Six fifty one. What was it last year? Three ninety one. Three ninety three. Yeah, about that. So it's going to go up. Seven times. Seven fifty two. Right. Yeah. Depending where you are. Going up seven or eight cents. I guess. Yeah. That's important. Supervisor Brock. Yeah, how much again are we taking out of the, the um, fund balance? Uh, general fund is uh, we're going to use one million two hundred and fifty-five thousand six hundred and two dollars, which is an increase of uh, two hundred and seventy-seven thousand one hundred and ninety. You have a projection of roughly where we're in five years, where we'll be with that. Or? I mean, what's the fund balance if we keep doing it? Uh, well, if, uh, you know, if the county would get a break here and not have to hire correction officers or uh, pay for debt service or, uh, you know, just have the normal stuff, pay increases and, you know, adjustments in the departments, I would like to see it go back down to, you know, half a million. That's, it was there a couple of years ago. Well, my, my concern is the economy's good and we're borrowing would you say a million something we're borrowing or not borrow, we're taking oh yeah we're going to pay I, the approximate overall debt service for the two projects is about 1.4 million no, I meant we're, we're taking so much out of a million something out of the fund balance yep. so that's not a tenable position over the long no. run so that's what we've said it, it, at the end of five yeah, years I know we we're going to be in trouble, and that's what those projections have showed us. Right. I think, correct, Frank? Right. So, it's, yeah. And I, well, now is the time to take care of that, not five years from now, as I'm sure you're aware. Right. Well, yeah, but that, that's why we do the projection. We know that Frank has, I've heard him say numerous times, we need to get the, the borrowing uh, under control so we don't have to go out and borrow any more money. And I think at the end of the five-year projection, the fund balance does go below what our threshold is supposed to be. And we've seen that, but then you've got to adjust. You, now you have to take these new numbers and adjust it, correct, Joanne? So it's going to be a little bit while until we do it. But yeah, you're right. But that's what Frank is, keeps impressing upon us, you know, with the, with the debt service. Right, I know. I'm just wondering what our thoughts are to, to correct the, <laughs> the problem. That, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we can, worry about it. Pass it along to the next board. So. Well, well, the main thing is to get revenue behind right. expense. How are we going to do that? But the only way we that's can do it we, now is to raise taxes. That's why we're increasing taxes. Two right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> or cut expenses. Right, exactly. Right. Increase revenue or cut expenses. So do we have any plans or are we just going to whistle until we... I mean, there's got to be a coming together on... Well, I, yeah, I, we had a good discussion about that yesterday at Erin County uh, because, you know, we're not the only county that's unique to this situation. We, we had a very good discussion about, you know, what are you going to keep doing with the tax cap being at 2% and it's going to go on, it looks like it's going to continue on. How are we going to get these uh, uh, expenses under control? And I think uh, Chairman Conover, you know, uh, discussed it at our inner county and uh, uh, I think there may be a, a movement in the future to talk to the state about something but what's that just a continuing the discussion maybe the event, they're eventually taking over Medicaid right <laughs> even if it was a progressive even if it was just a sliding scale situation that would be um, very important to our budget uh, Medicaid 13, 12, 13 million dollars out 13, of yeah. our budget, uh, all on the uh, property tax levy. But you've got counties out there that one said they were 50 percent of their levy now, and I know there are levies, county levies out there that are as high as 75 or 80 percent. 
of their levy is uh, Medicaid. Medicaid for life. So right. when you're carrying a burden like that, it's it's it's, it's, it's daunting. I have to tell you. Uh, oh, yeah. And I should say that the only way that these numbers are where they are today is because of the cuts and expenses, the cuts in positions that budget officer is keep and make. But for those cuts, uh, well, that would not be go ahead. this would not be tenable. And it's remember on the ex on the projections, they show the projections are based on assumptions on revenue. Uh, and it shows that the revenue, primarily sales tax, uh, can't keep pace, for example, with twelve and thirteen percent increases in health care costs. I'm just picking one, or personnel costs. Right, well that's, I had said to Frank a while ago that if if we keep giving two and a half or whatever it is percent increases in salaries, we're gonna, right. it's not untenable there. I can't believe that the state's gonna take over Medicaid. I just don't see that happening. Well, they put a cap on it and they, I mean, th th there has been movement from what was the historical Right, but, position and it's, but it does represent uh, something like a two point six billion dollar matter uh, to the state. So we're there. Well, they're working. They're, I mean, they're they're taking positions and they're moving services back to the state level. I mean, it's not a huge wave yet, but right. at least it's going in that direction. Right. Uh, well, there has I mean, been because we've lost employees that have gone to with the programs that the state has taken back away from us. So it's. Uh, but I think the five-year projection, what that's telling you in, uh, in each budget year is that you don't, over, don't, don't overstate, certainly don't overstate your revenue. Right. But historically, what we've been able to, the gauge I like to use for the fund balance is, you know, historically, how much at the end of the year have we been dropping to our fund balance? So, for example, if you understand the fund, you use 1.2. Um, million dollars and at the end of the year you're dropping eight or nine hundred thousand dollars to your fund balance then the net differential is two hundred thousand that's that's tenable for a while but if you find yourself using 1.2 million dollars out of your fund balance and you're not dropping anything to your fund balance then your fund balance is only a matter of a few years your fund balance will be gone exactly the quick barometer on that is it like we went back last year and looked at our operating condition and looked at how much we at the end of the year, when the blue was against the red, what what happened relative to the fund balance? I think that it's uh, been in the positive, and so that's why I'm actually pleased that Frank, you only needed to use a couple hundred thousand dollars in the general fund, and that the other funds actually came down. I think is is right. good news, at least based on the numbers we have today. But well, you can't continue to project those expenditures, right. rates of increase, and expect that those lines don't cross. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, no, no, no. That that is the. It's not. It's not sustainable. That's I mean, historically, the state has taken more than it gives. I mean, the 911 thing the other day. I mean, it started out with them giving, and then they use that to take it in the long run, and they take 200 million versus. Whatever it is, um. but that's why you're right on, Jim, and that's why we're trying to get a handle on this raise the age thing. You know, this is being forced upon the counties, and if you look, we're lucky to have uh, our probation officer as part of that team. You know, that's studying it. But if you look at that, I, I believe that's going to cost us money, and mm -hmm. and you know, it's going to cost our taxpayers money, but. The state is touting it, oh, it's going to save you money. And I, we don't know right now where it's going to save us money, but you're right there. There's a town I saw on TV where they kept taking out of their fund balance and sort of whistling in the dark, and then now they have this huge tax increase because they ran out. The well ran dry. Yeah. Well, and on a local level, I think we're all seeing that. Right. But what are we going to do is what I'm really getting at. Yeah. Instead of just talking about it, what are we going to do? Well, I think throughout the year we, we uh, try to carry on the kind of discussions that are going to take us to a positive way. For example, I think the movement to self-insurance, while that's not in and of itself 
represent a huge change in any one year, what it does do is it, it puts us on a different track in terms of avoided costs right. in, into the future. And it's those kind of consolidation when we do what we can do. But in the end, uh, the two primary funding sources uh, are the lobby and the sales tax. Uh, there are others, but those are the two principles. That they, they, um, at the sales tax, what well, probably since I'm going to since '99, Rob, um, I should say since um, uh, 2009, it's, about, it's increased about 21. It, it's increased, mm -hmm. and that's really been the saving, saving grace for us here in Warren County. Has been an increase in the sales tax. Right. Should that plateau, should that one or two percent not be there going forward? And the other thing to say to this budget is last year, I think we didn't project any increase, did we? And last right. year we yep. projected yep. no yep. increase in sales tax. So the fact that there was an increase helps that being very conservative yep. and not, because if you overstate that revenue, uh, even if you hit it, you don't have anything to carry into the next year. Now you we have no flexibility, so being conservative on the revenue side has helped us, but that has its limits as well. Mm -hmm. But with the tax cap and and the way we've been uh, been approaching it, we, we've been about one and a half percent increase for three four years now. And uh, while while I don't like to you know raise taxes, and nobody likes to raise taxes, when the opportunity presents itself with the one point eight four percent inflation factor, it, it we. You know, it, as much as I hate to say it, we need to take advantage of it because otherwise we will break the tax cap at some point. Yes, Supervisor. Supervisor Thomas here to bring out a good point that all that each municipality recognizes as well is that we can live under the tax cap for only so long. There's a lot of deferred maintenance and, and uh, deferred uh, purchases to, that are necessary. I would, I'd just like to say, I think overall, I'm, uh, I, I mean, I know you had to do some very difficult things in the budget uh, uh, to you and the team, and the department has to cooperate in helping to make some of those cuts. So, I mean, uh, congratulations, uh, I think you, you stayed below the tax cap. Rate right, 80, 80 something thousand dollars. Uh, did I read that correctly on the last yep. page? 81. 81, and um, we lowered the uh, requirements of uh, all the fund balances, but the general fund, the general fund's up a couple hundred thousand, a few hundred thousand. So, I mean, to me, this looks uh, very much in a balanced uh, budget. I don't know, Mike, what, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's very good. Uh, you know, I'm pleased. Oh, uh, on the agenda, there is a, there's three referrals that we should probably, uh, there's a up, there's number one is the uh, updated five-year plan to be presented after uh, the close of the books of the treasurer's office. I, I think we did that, actually. So if we can take that off. Uh, there was a referral from uh, the Support Services Committee requesting that the Budget Committee consider the establishment of a reserve fund uh, for unexpected employee retirement expenses. I, I think uh, I think we also have been addressing that within the budget also. And the last one is a referral from the Criminal, Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee uh, requesting a uh, that we the Budget Committee consider the purchase of a new hazmat truck. Uh, for an estimated cost of uh, 56000 for uh, Office of Emergency Services. And I think uh, Supervisor Montesi, I believe, has addressed that uh, problem, and I don't think that that uh, <coughs> will be necessary. Well, <coughs> the, uh, the problem was that the truck that we have is five or six years old. It only has 5,000 miles on it, and it's a diesel, and they don't run it but once a month. and. Uh, when they do run it, it, uh, it has its problems. So um, I took it down, uh, I guess DPW in general couldn't handle whatever needed to be fixed on it. 
So we had to go down to Nehmer and um, they had their diesel guy look at it and got it running. And the, the recommendation was let one of the firemen where we keep it down at the uh, firehouse in, in Glens Falls drive it once a week. Let them take it home because uh, if you're not going to use it, we're going to have this problem with the diesel. Um, I certainly don't want to spend fifty-six thousand uh, on a <coughs> for a truck that uh, we only have five thousand miles on this thing after five or six years. Uh, there's a little bit of body rust on it, and that can be probably a five or six hundred dollar repair. But other than that, the truck is in, I think, in good shape. But uh, we need to authorize our our. Um, Public Safety Committee to um, let somebody drive that truck. <laughs> right. Right. That doesn't appear to be a big one, is it? You know? Nope. No, I mean, we can handle that, can we? You'll drive it. Right? <laughs> That's right. The rotating hey, supervisor's truck. I'm the volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looked good in my driveway. We know? can take it to Anna College. <laughs> How many people can you fit in there? <laughs> I think that uh, takes care of the report. Uh, anything, anything else from anyone? If not, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Supervisor Montessi, seconded by Supervisor Brock. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.